Hello and welcome back folks. In this lecture we will be talking about cover letters and job application letters and hopefully this chapter won't be as long as the previous one but uh, still has lots and lots of very useful information not just for the assignment that we're working on but uh, as you'll see for your intended career and your actual job hunt. Uh, so we've got a lot to cover here so uh, let's get into it. All right, so here's what we'll be covering in this fine lecture. Letters versus a resume. What's the difference between the cover letter and the resume? We'll be talking more about the employers and, the, and how to do effective job research, which is huge if you actually want to land a good job. I would talk about a solicited letters uh, versus prospecting letters. And then we'll talk about email application letters, because this is a big thing. I'll be talking about how to develop that professional image, how to write an application essay, and then wrap up with social networking and personal websites. So a lot of good material here, very applicable, practical stuff. And here are the learning objectives. Uh, so by the end of this lecture, hopefully, uh, you'll be able to find uh, the information you need to write that letter to a specific employer. Uh, that's important. How to write that job letter that makes you look attractive to employers. <laughs> I really hope you, if you read the uh, all the sidebars in this chapter, I highly recommend that because they are absolutely hilarious. <laughs> some, some of the incredibly uh, silly things that people do. Uh, so I'll just, I'm not going to uh, spoil the jokes here for you. Just look at the, uh, go back. If you haven't looked at those sidebars in chapter 13, I, I suggest you do that. Uh, and then uh, lastly, using the social networking and the personal websites uh, to create a virtual uh, cover letter. Okay, first up, what's the difference between a resume versus a job letter? Uh, so the re uh, resume adapted to a position, whatever that position is you're applying for, uh, whereas the job letter is more adapted to the needs of one organization. Uh, so you might send the same resume uh, to multiple uh, uh, job ads, right? But you only send a, you wouldn't send the same letter. Uh, you'll definitely need to uh, customize that letter to fit the uh, particular job, particular company uh, that you're sending it to. You can't just spam out the same job letter everywhere. Uh, that would not be effective. Uh, also, the resume summarizes all of your qualifications, right? It covers a broad, span, uh, broad spectrum. Uh, whereas, again, this job letter uh, shows that you know the organization, you've done, some, you've done your homework on it, You've uh, figured out how those qualifi your qualifications can help that particular uh, company. And then how you differ from other applicants gives you a chance to basically expound, explicate some items you might have been thinking about as you were looking at the ad and the resume. Uh, ways you can articulate how you're different, what makes you special. And see a few more points on this. Uh, the resume might avoid controversial material. Uh, whereas the job letter uh, gives you a chance to explain those uh, career changes or gaps. You know, maybe you majored in something that has nothing to do with the job. Uh, so the job letter would give you a chance to explain, well, I, yes, I majored in English, but I'm uh, applying for computer science because X, Y, and Z, right? Now, the resume, using those short parallel phrases and fragments, hopefully there won't be complete sentences on that resume. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, it's supposed to be little phrases instead, verbal, um, you know, performed, <laughs> uh, per, uh, researched shell cultures, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's not going to be, I uh, researched uh, shell cultures at such and such a place. And it'll be uh, clipped. Uh, whereas the job letter, one of the... Uh, reasons that you're writing the letter is to show you can write a complete sentence. You can be gr grammatical. Uh, you can be organized. Uh, you can organize a paragraph. Uh, and those are very basically showing you have the writing skills, which is, again, one of those things that the employers are really, really desperate to find people with those good writing skills. And that's a good chance to show that you can do it. All right, one of the big uh, questions I get a lot has to do with uh, how do you learn about the job? You know, some people, uh, they'll say, you, you said you wanted me to uh, address this letter to a particular person. How do I do that? And really, it's not as hard as all of that. Uh, it's just a matter of doing the job research. And here they give you some other reasons. Uh, I'm not sure why I started with this point here, but uh, tapping into the hidden job market. 
And so what this means is that there can be jobs that are available, but maybe aren't advertised somewhere. Uh, so learning more about that employer, the job, uh, you might discover some of those just by talking to people. Uh, maybe you can learn about a job before it's uh, even advertised. Uh, learn about the employers and the jobs. Right? That's the main thing we're doing. Uh, if you want your, if you want to tailor make your um, cover letter to fit a particular job, uh, they need to figure out what's going on at that company. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe they uh, just installed a new database software. Now here's some more tips. Yeah, researching the organization. This could be just getting online, uh, looking at the websites. Uh, usually, somewhere buried on there, they might have a review. They, maybe they've been reviewed by an external company, something like that. Maybe they've been mentioned in the newspaper uh, or maybe a magazine, a small or maybe a local one or a big one has covered them. Uh, just whatever you can find out. You know, if it's a big enough company, you can even get on Wikipedia and learn some stuff. But uh, the more you can learn, the better. Yes, find out who will receive the letter. Um, so you don't want to ever say to whom it may concern, because basically that says it doesn't concern anybody. <laughs> That's about as impersonal as it gets, right? That's like a piece of mail that you get uh, that says, uh, uh, current to current resident. Isn't that exciting? Don't you want to open, <laughs> open that letter? <laughs> of course you don't. Or if you get an email that's obviously spam, uh, you don't even want to open it. Uh, whereas if they know your name, if the letter is made out to you personally, you'll be a lot more likely to open that. Now, same thing here. You know, somebody just emailed me and just said, you know, call me English professor or just professor. Uh, I would not, uh, you know, I'd feel like this, per this person didn't even bother to find out my name. Wow. Uh, yes, and then learning about the job. Uh, so you could call up and ask about the job. A lot of people do this. I don't have, see, <laughs> I guess in some situations it wouldn't be appropriate, but uh, I don't see a problem with it. Uh, maybe you talk to people that work there, if you're connected to them, and figure out, uh, you know, what exactly are they looking for? Can you give them any tips or leads? You know, special things uh, that they need that I might be able to, uh, to, to talk about in my letter. <clears throat> Some more you can learn about the job better. I'll just give you a quick example from my own uh, job search. You know, first couple job interviews I did, to become a professor, I really didn't do any research on the universities. I mean, all I did was uh, I studied my resume or uh, CVs, we call them, curriculum uh, vitae. So I knew a lot about myself, uh, but I didn't know much about those particular universities I was applying to. So when I would do the phone interviews, they would ask me, you know, what are some of the courses we offer here that you would be interested in teaching? And I would just have to say, well, anything in composition, uh, anything with rhetoric, anything with business communication, that sort of thing. I didn't know the actual course names uh, that they had there. So I, I had not done my homework. Uh, so I <laughs> to, uh, I didn't have a class like this, right? So you're lucky. Uh, but later on, I learned uh, that I should go on the university website, take a look at the course offerings, see what's there. Maybe there's a course that I feel like I could teach, but it's not on the books. You know, something like that's great. Uh, it gives me something to talk about in the interview and in the cover letter. Uh, but I didn't know that. Also, I got kind of lucky because St. Cloud State had just been reviewed. Uh, they brought in, basically paid some consultants to come in and basically say what was good and bad about the program. And uh, one of the things, I got this report, it was online. As I'm reading this report and I see that they are looking, they feel like they have a weakness in technology, uh, that not enough uh, professors are using technology uh, well. I think that was one of the criticisms uh, that this uh, uh, these consultants had talked about. So <laughs> uh, I found that in my interviews, I really harped on that in my job letter too, how how I use technology extensively. And I gave uh, lots of examples of how I was using it in classes I'm teaching, was teaching as a uh, TA. And so I think that really was impressive. You know, it showed that I had learned enough about the job uh, to know what was going on there to find some of the ways I could be, I could, me specifically, uh, I could benefit them because uh, not a lot of English professors like technology, so that kind of sets me apart. And there's probably something like that uh, that you can do when you're on the job hunt. Now here we're talking about what to actually put in that job application letter. Uh, the, what should it have in it? How should that's the content? And then the organization—that's pretty obvious. You know, how should you should you just have one big paragraph 
How should you have 17 paragraphs? How should you how, how should you open it? You know, we'll talk about all that here. Uh, but for now, with the content, you should focus on these things: qualifications for the major requirements of the job. Uh, so take a good, nice, hard look at that uh, job ad. And they'll have on their qualifications. Usually they say qualifications required or expected. There'll be a little list of those. And then somewhere under it will be desired qualifications or additional qualifications, basically just the, uh, the sugar on top, right? Uh, but you really, the most important thing is that you want to convince them, hey, <laughs> I can do this job, right? I have the requirements. Um, so if they say that you, you're required to have a degree in the field, you make sure that's clear. You do have a degree in the field. Or you, you do have that certificate, that training. Uh, also, points that separate you from the other applicants. Now, you don't know who these other applicants are necessarily, especially if it's a bunch of them. They could be applying from all over the world uh, at this point. Uh, so you want to think about what's uh, basically atypical. Uh, so for me, I gave that example of, yes, I'm an English professor, but I who just happens to really like computers. And at least all the other English professors I know, there's a few uh, here at St. Cloud State. It's kind of unusual uh, how many there are, but at most universities, that's not uh, expected at all. Uh, so that's something that kind of separates me out. Uh, points that show your knowledge of the organization. All right, so I mentioned that report that I had seen, uh, but maybe there's a great example in the book of a guy, I think it's a guy, applying to... Uh, a game studio. <laughs> I like that one because I've interviewed probably hundreds of uh, uh, game designers and uh, publishers at this point. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, maybe you've, uh, the, he mentioned that he had uh, played some of the games of that company and knew a little bit about their backstory. You know, maybe all he did was go to Wikipedia, you know, and who knows uh, how extensively he's played the games, but that's, uh, that's important. You know, I would be, I think it would be, <laughs> be scandal. I would be scandalized. Uh, as a game publisher or a game studio, if somebody came to me looking for a job and th that person had never played any of the games uh, that studio had made, that would seem a little bit <laughs> like a woefully, uh, woeful lack of uh, research. Uh, but anyway, it could be anything just, you know, you, basically you're saying I'm not just sending this out to any company willy nilly uh, with no sense of, of focus, uh, but I know some things, I know enough about this position and this company. Uh, to know that it's a good fit and this is how, where you're showing it. And then the qualities that every employer is likely to value. Uh, we've mentioned several at this point. Communication skills is huge. That, that could be writing, could be uh, oral communication. Uh, that's something just about every employer will like. Uh, anything with the collaboration, teamwork, management, leadership. Uh, typically those are pretty good for just about any position. You know, I might add here too. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of the employers I talk to just tell me that, you know, look, if the person will show up to work and show up on time and have a positive attitude, you know, the rest is, uh, you know, we can work around whatever problems they have. So that, that's something else to think about. Um, you know, even like with class attendance, if you have perfect attendance uh, in your classes, that might actually turn out to be a lot more valuable than you would think. All right, job application letters, the two kinds. Uh, the solicited letter just means uh, uh, they've announced a job opening. Basically, they're asking for this. And so there's a re request for you to send in the letter. Uh, that's called a solicited letter. And the other kind is maybe there's not a job app, uh, job opening. Maybe they don't even have a job. It's, it's something unannounced. Uh, so you kind of, you know, the word prospecting, think about a gold prospector out in the, the mountain somewhere. Uh, you're not sure there's anything there. Uh, you're just checking it out, right? You're, you're seeing if there's some interest, seeing if you could pique some interest uh, in you. And I think, the, I forget the statistic the book gives there, uh, but there's a surprising amount of these prospecting letters that, that end up as a, uh, you know, the person ends up with a job. Uh, maybe because there's not as many people sending those in as, a, you know, as opposed to the uh, solicited letters. All right, so let's look at some techniques you can do in both kinds, both of these uh, kinds of letters. When addressing the letter to a specific person, all you have to do, if you don't know who it is, you just pick up the phone 
maybe email or get on the website. I see who the, you know, first of all, look at the job ad because I might say in the job ad the person's name. Uh, barring that, you know, look online, see if you could figure out who the uh, HR contact is um, or head of the department. You know, whoever it is likely to uh, look at the letters. And if you're really, if you're still not sure, uh, again, there's no problem. I'm just picking up the phone, calling them and say, hey, you know, I'm writing, just wondering who's the, the contact person who's going to be uh, reviewing these. Who should I make my letter out to? Basically, how do they want to be addressed? Uh, that's this part, the specific. No, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Do they want doctor, miss, mister, whatever? It's a good time to find that out. Uh, the specific position you're applying for, again, they don't want just random people showing up with no, no clue <laughs> what they want to do for the company. Uh, they need to have a position in mind. Uh, your qualifications. Let's see, show you how you're different than uh, from other applicants. Show knowledge of the organization and position. And uh, refer to the resume if it's enclosed. Oh, yes. <laughs> Most important point of all. <laughs> to ask for the interview. All right, so any kind of business communication uh, is going to have a, there's a purpose for writing it. You have to make sure that it's clear what your purpose is for writing that letter and what you want them to do, basically. And some people forget to put this, and it's kind of ludicrous. You write this uh, nice job application letter, but you actually don't ever uh, actually tell them that you're looking to be interviewed. Uh, so that's, don't forget to do that. Uh, ask for the interview. That's the whole purpose of the writing this letter. Okay, now we're talking specifically about the solicited letters or the letter that you're writing in response to a job ad. As the state that you're applying, you know, that's, I like to see that as the first sentence. I am writing to apply for the name of the job. And just look at the job ad again. Make sure you get it right. <laughs> uh, whatever it does, you have to be, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of attention to detail there. Uh, yeah, how do you know about the job? Did you look at it? Did you find it on monster.com? Com, let's say, or maybe some some person told you about the job. You know, how did you become aware of it? Uh, show that you have um, the main qualification the job requires. It's kind of common sense stuff. Uh, but also other qualifications you have, maybe something that's not mentioned in the job ad specifically, but you think, you know, that might actually be germane. And also, this is the, the big deal. It gives you this chance to develop your main qualifications in more detail. Uh, be specific about what you've done. All right, so we kind of talked about this with the resumes, but just because you took a C++ class uh, doesn't really tell them much about what you can do with the language. All right, or just because you, uh, you know, volunteered in, in the in the, oh, what is it, the Boys and Girls Club, <laughs> something like Big Brothers, I forget the name of the, uh, the club's kind of evading me at the minute, at the moment, but, uh, you know, just because you volunteered there, it doesn't really tell them much. Uh, it definitely doesn't tell them a lot about what, how that is uh, relevant, how it pertains to the job. So this is a chance to maybe flesh some of that out. Uh, related achievements to work you will do in the new job. All right, so they, first of all, notice this word achievements. Uh, so what did you do that stands out? How are you excellent at whatever it is you do? And then how will this tie into the work you'll do in that job? Uh, so just because you, uh, you know, captain of the rowing team, your team has won all these prizes, great. But how does that relate? And I think you could say, well, it shows that I have good leadership. I'm great in, as a member of a team. Uh, you know, we can get, <laughs> we have determination. I mean, it actually shows quite a lot. Uh, it's even though it seems like it might have nothing to do with the job at first, but if, if you just think about it, you might find some ways to tie that in. All right, a few other points on this. Uh, develop those other qualifications, even if they're not required. Oh, we covered that one. Uh, show what separates you from the other applicants. Illustrate your knowledge of the organization. This is probably one of the key ones. Uh, fairly recently, I was uh, on the creative, I was on the uh, search committee looking for creative writing uh, teachers, professors at St. Cloud State. And we got, I don't know, maybe 50. <laughs> it felt like hundreds of uh, applicants. And you could tell some of them were just sending out the same letter, the same stuff to every place because there's nothing in there specific about St. Cloud State. And most of them really didn't get past the first wave, right, of uh, 
uh, recalling. Uh, whereas other ones would mention specific things about St. Cloud or uh, the university itself or the town. Uh, just they, they showed that they had done some research or they knew about it already. And that, that made a big difference. Yes, of course, asking for the interview, I've already hammered on that. So I'm going to keep going on about it. Uh, tell, one of, uh, tell when you're available to interview and to begin work. Uh, so some people get a little too specific with this, and they're like, call me. I'm available from uh, you know, 6 to 7 p.m. on Saturdays or something. You know, they're not going, yeah, you should just be available whenever. <laughs> and, you know, if you're desperate for a job, you're not going to be too worried about, um, you know, if you have to uh, drop what you're doing and take that call, uh, you're, you're going to take it. Um, but... It is a good idea, something I hadn't really thought about before in the book, but if it's not, if it's a job that's far away and you know you'll be in that area for whatever reason during a particular time, maybe you'll be traveling there, uh, you might mention that because it would be convenient to bring you in for an interview, um, be convenient for you. So, you know, I, I, I could see the point there. Uh, I think this item about beginning work is, is pretty crucial, too. You know, if you know you've got a few... Uh, months left of school, for example, you're not going to drop out uh, to start the work immediately. Uh, you know, so situations like that. Yes, and on a positive forward-looking note, so usually just <laughs> looking forward to uh, interviewing with you. All right, the prospecting letter is what we're switched to now. And remember, this is the ones that there's no specific job ad. Now, for you, for uh, your assignment, I want you to only do the solicited letter, but it's nice to know about this other option. Uh, so these, you got to find some way to catch the reader's interest. Uh, you know, why should I even read the letter? Create the bridge between that attention getter and qualifications. So you notice they might almost like one of those uh, classic essays where they say start with a surprising statistic or something like that. Uh, you know, did you know that uh, four out of five <laughs> uh, legal offices blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then you can say, well, I can help with that problem if you're experiencing that. Uh, give you a chance again to just develop those uh, strong points. Again, we got a chance to go into more specifics, how to relate what you've done uh, to what you could do for that organization, show knowledge of the organization. And so sometimes I see these, uh, I've heard of people that, for example, will uh, go to a local company's website and they'll find some problems with the website. They'll see it's poorly done. Or maybe the company doesn't even have a website or their Facebook page or Twitter feed, whatever it is. And let's say you take a look at that. You see that uh, there's some problems or, you know, maybe they're not doing a, you know, basically you could really add some, uh, add some strength to that. So that might be a good example where you could do one of these prospecting letters and uh, let them know some stuff about what you could do for them. Even though there's, they're not asking for it, it could still be uh, helpful. Sorry about that little chime. Uh, identify the role you wish to feel uh, to fill. Uh, so you can say, I'd like to be your social media uh, expert, uh, social media manager, whatever you want to call it, uh, something like that. But again, you want to ask for that interview, right? Please call me at such and such. <laughs> yeah, when you're available. Uh, the positive forward-looking statement. So in a lot of ways, these are the, these are similar, if not the same. Uh, just a few little key differences, mostly with not having a specific uh, job ad to respond to. Uh, the email application uh, letters, you got some choices to make there. You could paste the traditional letter into the email. Just, just simply a copy, paste. <laughs> Everybody knows how to do that. <laughs> Uh, you could edit the letter so it fits uh, one email screen. I don't know. I guess, uh, you know, if you've got a lot of uh, white space, a lot of gaps, or if the formatting looks messed up, you know, you might spend some time editing that to try to make it look nice. But, I mean, the truth is they could zoom in and, and out uh, or scroll down. Uh, include the name as part of the subject line. That's a good point. And put the job number title in the first paragraph yeah so these are all good tips if you um, and this is probably going to be the case to be honest with you uh, most of the jobs in these days they don't really care to have you send in a, a letter uh, formal letters and you know, <laughs> postage and all that I, I remember only one time 
Uh, I was asked to send a, my job, uh, my resume and letter by fax. <laughs> I thought, wow, do I really want to work for an organization that's still using the fax machine? Uh, yeah, this would be probably the case of uh, using an email. A little bit more about these uh, emails. Let's see. Uh, use the standard business letter features and end with your name. So in that way, it's not going to be different than the, the letter. Uh, use standard business language. <laughs> Omit all caps and emoticons. Now, come on. No, surely nobody's going to be that ridiculous. But uh... <laughs> yeah, don't use the little smiley faces. Yes, that brings us nicely into professional images. So create, a, create the letter in a program that features spell check. All right, so even though this is what happens a lot of the times, you'll go in to apply for the job and they'll say, go to this website, there's a job, you know, here's the page where you go to apply. I even notice that places like Walmart now, they basically just direct you to a computer and you apply on that. And I guess in that case, this wouldn't apply, but you know, if it's just text boxes, you know, don't just type it in there because your word, your browser might not have a spell check. Some of them do. I'm pretty sure Google Chrome and uh, Edge, and I'm pretty sure most modern spell checkers or uh, browsers would tell you if there's a spelling error. Uh, but if there's any doubt, you know, it's easy enough just to paste it into uh, paste it in from Word. Hey, <laughs> the standard 12-point font. You know, just usually you're better off just don't even mess with the default settings on the on these programs you usually just mess it up uh, the same thing about being a specific person including the courtesy title a doctor uh, department head a coach <laughs> whatever the case may be uh, don't mention the relatives names uh, so I suppose if a relative uh, includes you into the job or a relative works there uh, you don't want to mention that because basically that's looking like nepotism uh, you know, people that only hire their, their relatives. And that's not usually, uh, that's kind of frowned upon, if not a, <laughs> a fireable offense. Uh, unless, of course, it's a family business. Uh, omit personal information not related to the job. Uh, I don't know why anybody would do this, but uh, again, if it doesn't pertain to the job, maybe uh, you shouldn't mention this, you know, things, uh, you know, you, do you need to mention your uh, your kids and uh, do you need to mention uh, your age uh, all this sort of thing if it's not related not relevant uh, just don't put it now professional images continue let's see, use a conservative writing style so basically just no nonsense unless applying for a creative job I suppose I don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> Even though, like I say, all these professors that were applying to be creative writers, uh, I didn't see any of them being uh, especially creative in their job letter. I mean, they were just, at least the good ones, were basically uh, professional business documents. I didn't see any jokes or, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to be suspenseful or <laughs> anything. And so I'm not even really sure about that point. Uh, edit carefully and proofread it several times. Only perfect is good enough. That's right. Uh, some big spelling errors, some big uh, grammatical mistakes could conceivably give a, you know, give them a bad impression. Uh, print on the same paper used for the resume. Of course, that's only if you're mailing it in. Uh, use a computer to print the envelope address. You know, I think that might be overkill. To be honest with you. Uh, I guess it's probably not a terrible idea, uh, but I can't imagine them. Uh, you know, not not taking you seriously just because you didn't do that. Uh, professional images, the writing style. Yes, use smooth, concise uh, sentences. You mean just don't waste don't waste the person's time. This is professional writing. Uh, they're not reading these letters for pleasure. All right, <laughs> they don't ultimately uh, want to know your life story. Uh, it's just, can you do the job? Are you qualified? Are you going to be uh, a good employee uh, or not. It's, it's basically all they need to know. Uh, so the quicker you can make the case for that, the better. Uh, use the technical knowledge or jargon of your field. I right, show that you know the you can talk to talk. Uh, again, though, I would caveat this or make a caveat here only if you know that the person's going to understand it. And so if it's just like with that web design example, 
maybe the company, the boss, super manager, whatever, doesn't know what JavaScript means, and uh, or uh, you know AJAX or whatever it is. So it's not really going to be helpful. I just put that in without explaining. You know, a business business ease and stuffy words. So don't try to sound like a robot. I don't try to use all those, uh, uh, you know, expressions from business. Uh, what's what's some good examples? Yeah, the heretofores and <laughs> be it resolved that uh, my, Matt Barton is applying for a job. Yeah. Uh, use a lively, lively, energetic style that makes you seem real. Right, it's a chance to come away, break, shatter out of that conception of just being one of a big po pool of applicants. You know, see if you can bring out a little personality. Might go a long ways towards uh, getting you to that next step. Avoid words with the negative connotations. Uh, so they gave some examples of that in the book. I think somebody had said, uh, "I had I, at Saint Cloud." I'll just make paraphrase this a little bit. At Saint Cloud State University, I took an excessive amount of English classes. <laughs> uh, so that word "excessive." It's got kind of a negative connotation to it, right? It sounds like you're a little critical, like you took too many classes. So you want to avoid that. Uh, show how that back your background applies to the employers. You know, sometimes this will be obvious, uh, but sometimes it's not. You know, again, that example of the, the English major applying for this computer job. Uh, show what you can do for employers, not what they can do for you. This one is by far the key. Uh, this is one. This is what I, I see. Nine out of ten pool uh, of these projects, these letters, they talk all about themselves. Uh, they talk all about how this position will benefit them. Uh, they don't say anything at all uh, about how they can, what can, what they can do for that company, or what um, something they can do this to, uh, you know, that, that makes them uh, different than all the other people applying uh, specific to that company. Uh, they failed to do that. It's just, oh, look how great I am. Uh, look how good this position is going to be for my future. Um, so again, really don't make this mistake. It's not about, you know, I guess it is about you and the sake of you showing your, that you're qualified to do the job, uh, but it's really more about what you could do for them. I mean, they don't, again, they don't want your life to, why should they care about you uh, personally? you know, all this uh, other data, all this other information. Now, all they want to know is if I, is this person going to earn uh, their paycheck? Uh, don't plead or apologize. Uh, yes, please. I, I'm desperate for, <laughs> desperate for work. Yeah, it's kind of sad. I mean, that might be the case, right? Uh, or you say, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have the qualifications that I really need uh, or something like this. I mean, you, basically this is just making you look, uh, look bad. Emphasis on the you attitude. Now, don't use you when you mean yourself or all people. Now, use I infrequently. Uh, revise to use me or my instead. So a lot of people, just every sentence will be I, blah, blah, blah. I, dot, dot, dot. I, dot, dot, dot. So see if you can just vary that up for the sake of avoiding uh, monotony. Yeah, every uh, every paragraph with I. Uh, begin sentences with phrases or clauses. So instead of saying, I studied at St. Cloud State University, blah, 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 you could just say, at St. Cloud, at St. Cloud State University, comma, I. And that way you're not starting it with I every time. Uh, so how long should the paragraphs be? Uh, I say fairly short, uh, four or five type lines. That seems fine to me. Uh, vary the paragraph length. So you don't necessarily want every paragraph to be the exact same number of sentences. That's not really important. Uh, you want some shorter, some long. As you cover only one subject in long paragraphs, uh, divide paragraphs to cover two or more topics. Right, so usually people will uh, have a paragraph where they go into more detail about, you know, maybe the education, and then the next paragraph might go into more detail about a a specific uh, job uh, experience they wanted to, to cover. Uh, so you wouldn't put all that into one paragraph, right? You divide it up because you're kind of moving on from education to a job experience. Uh, the length of the letter needs to be at least three paragraphs. It should only be a page. 
let's see, tighten each sentence. Yeah, so usually when students come to me and they say, look, I can't, I need two pages. I can't get everything onto one page. And I'll say, well, let's take a look at some of these sentences. Can, can we make some of these more concise or some of these wordy? Uh, do you really need all of this, uh, all of these words? Can we say the same thing in fewer words? And usually that's the case. <laughs> Using slightly smaller margins. Oh, yeah, I don't know about that one. Uh, select a font size, one point smaller. I'm, not, I'm kind of questioning some of these tips. Uh, use two pages if you need to. Yeah, so I would just say before I would do this business, uh, I would just go on to two pages. I mean, if you really have two quality pages you want them to read, it's not, and you know it's not just garbage, you know it's not fluff, just go on, you know, two pages, fine. Uh, but, yeah, that's good advice, too. You need at least six lines of text on page two. A little bit fussy, I guess, but people don't like to flip that page and just see, like, one line or a few words on it. it seems like a waste. Uh, use extra space to add details about your experience. <laughs> All right, editing and proofreading. Now, obviously, you edit and proofread this thing. You know, you don't ever just uh, send it. You know, even if it is one of those sites, if you're just doing it on the web and it's all a website, uh, fill in the blanks, you know, don't just hit send right away. You know, go back when you're, before you hit submit, go back, look it over, uh, see, if, just do a visual scan first and then uh, read it out loud. It's usually very helpful. Uh, you really, if you really want the job, you know, it's worth taking an extra few minutes to really, really look at that thing closely. Yeah, check it over one last time. <laughs> Don't reveal uh, frustration with a job search. Right. So this is the, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to have to work with you, right? And everybody would rather work with somebody that's pleasant to be around, somebody that's upbeat, somebody that's positive, somebody that has some energy, uh, somebody who's not annoying <laughs> or negative or wasteful of time or uh, boring. You know, you, you know, it's just human nature. And one of the things that's tempting is when people are writing these letters, they, they, they've been having a tough time. You know, maybe they've been out of work for a while. They've uh, been, uh, you know, struggling to make ends meet. Uh, they've had bad experiences with other interviews. You know, all that stuff is neither here nor there. Just <laughs> think it, but don't put it in. <laughs> you know, don't be negative. Nobody likes to be around a complainer. Uh, yeah, check your tone, right? Are you being, are you saying, do you sound menacing? <laughs> do you sound too aggressive? Sound like some kind of, uh, you know, person who's going to be a problem for them? Uh, and again, some of the things they look for is just as a person being negative about their current job or previous employer. Uh, that can really have an impact. They'll say, well, this person seems to be qualified, but look at this. You know, they're really trashing their, their former employer. You know why put it in there? You're just jeopardizing your chances. So just stick to the stick, stick to positives. Uh, don't beg. <laughs> Please give me the job. <laughs> no. uh, show too much gratitude uh, for common places such as reading the letters. So th you know, thank you so much for taking the time to read my letter. It means the world to me. <laughs> it's, it's like whoa. Uh, this person sounds a little bit. It almost sounds like the person didn't even expect me to do that. So maybe I need to go back and look at those qualifications again. There must be something amiss. I don't even put the thought into the person's head. Uh, professional images, the follow-up. Uh, so let's say you, uh, you know, you sent out, you responded to the ad, you sent your cover letter, you sent your resume or whatever it is, uh, website. Uh, you haven't heard from them in a while. You know, maybe it's been a few days, <laughs> a few weeks, turns into a few months. Uh, when do you want to follow up and say, uh, you know, uh, did you just want to make sure that you received my letter? Uh, want to make sure everything's okay, the application went through okay. Uh, that's basically the question. How long should you wait before you do that or, or do it at all? And I'm tempted to just say I wouldn't do it at all. Um, it usually just shows you're worried about it or you, you seem like a little bit uh, over eager somehow. Uh, it probably just come off more as annoying than anything else. So I just probably wouldn't even do it. Uh, if you do have a, since if you have a serious, if you have real reasons to doubt, you know, maybe you're not sure you've, uh, the, the, you was on the website, the website went down, you think it submitted, you're not sure. You know, if it's that kind of situation, then you can do it. 
and they say uh, one about two or three weeks. Let's see, contact the employer after two or three weeks if you hear nothing. Uh, basically, what people are expecting is, you know, did I get the job or did I not get the job? <laughs> so, uh, you kind of get, uh, you know, especially if you are just sitting there, you're unemployed. Uh, really, you want to get to work as soon as possible, or at least know, you know, I need to figure out now, do I need to start thinking about moving or not? You know, this is one of the problems I ran into uh, with this job. I mean, I was moving from Florida all the way to Minnesota, and that was going to take a while. And that's, that's not a, you know, just logistically speaking, making that uh, big of a move. <laughs> I needed some time. Uh, but I knew better than just to keep pestering them about it because you know, sometimes it just takes a while uh, before they can make the decision. Yeah, and sometimes a job might even ask you to write a whole essay. Uh, so I would imagine this would be more for a communication job or uh, you know, especially in kind of creative writing or writing essay, uh, you know, work along those lines. They might ask you to write an essay instead of a letter. Uh, so the good news there gives you a bigger chance to expand on those points, You're not just trying to stick to one or two uh, pages at this point. Uh, you, you know, just whatever they, if they tell you they want a uh, you know, six page essay or 2000 words, uh, whatever, that's good. Uh, just make sure you follow that. Yeah, the essay format. Uh, capture the audience's interest and show you are exceptional. So you don't want these to be boring. Yeah, you want to have some of your personality in there, right? You don't, again, you don't need to sound mechanical. Uh, may use anecdotes that show you developing as a professional. So basically, the anecdote is just a little story about yourself. You know, maybe something that happened in class, a project you worked on, uh, a fun, something fun somebody told you. Uh, outline the future goals. So this is when I knew <laughs> I wanted to become a nurse. Uh, let's kind of link that story to the goal. Uh, writing guides. Uh, follow the directions closely, huge. So if they say double spaced, <laughs> you really need to double space. If you don't follow the instructions, they're just going to assume that you're just a careless person. It doesn't look good. Uh, just follow the directions. Even if you don't like them, <laughs> just follow them. Yeah, the folk being focused, a unifying theme. Uh, the you don't want this essay to be just like any other essay. You don't want it all over the place. You know, you want to have a theme in mind that you stick to, keep coming back to. Uh, catch the audience's attention in the opening. Uh, vivid details, unique details. Avoid unsupported generalities and cliches. So we've talked about this in the resume too. Just saying, oh, I am an excellent people person. Well, you can't just say that and move on. I need some evidence for that. Uh, the topic sentences, you know what those are, I'm sure, from uh, grade school or high school. It's just the paragraph begins basically by saying what the paragraph is about. You know, what, what topic is that paragraph going to be concerned with? And then when you want to move on to another topic, you do the same thing, paragraph two. Uh, the personal voice, for example, of course, you'd be using I in this. You wouldn't be saying that the author of or using only passive voice, uh, ending with the strong conclusion. So again, this is just like writing any essay in class in terms of uh, the organization. Good opener, good intro, good, uh, strong conclusion. Uh, social networking and personal websites. So say many employers find new employees by searching on the internet. Uh, so this would probably be LinkedIn, uh, Monster. You know, there's, there's a thousand of these <laughs> websites at this point. And if you're really looking for a job, you might be on three or four of these uh, sort of job-related sites. Now, social networking and a personal website function as a virtual cover letter. So LinkedIn, for example, you can really develop out that profile. You could put a little, basically, a cover letter into that, have it built in to your profile for people to read. Um, let's see what else I want to say here about social networking. Uh, manage your social networking profiles. You know, and I know a lot of people, you know, they're on Facebook, and Facebook can be a real killer, you know, if you got a real uh, crazy page and, you know, these things. If you, if you had the, if this thing, sometimes your Facebook page might go back to, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. And so what I usually, uh, my usual advice these days is just make your Facebook totally private. 
so only your friends can see it. Uh, I think that's probably the best move at this point, because otherwise they might dig in there and find something. Uh, but even, you know, beyond that, uh, just making sure all these, you know, if you're on Monster, if you're on LinkedIn, if you're on, uh, you know, three or four of these other ones, Zip Recruiter, uh, you want them to keep those updated. So make a point of going in there every now and then, checking them out, making sure everything's up to date. Uh, try to think about keywords that the employers might search for. So if you're uh, professional communication, for example, they'll, they'll be looking for things like uh, uh, word processing, let's say, or, or PowerPoint, maybe. Uh, whatever it is that you're, you feel like you're good at, you definitely want them to be able to find you based on those keywords. Uh, keep the profile pictures professional. <laughs> Probably should go without saying, but... Uh, some people, they just take a crummy old webcam photo or just a quick shot with their phone, and they're just, you know, maybe not even, uh, you know, I just saw one the other day where the person looked like they were lying down in, in bed looking at you. It just kind of creeped me out. <laughs> it's not very professional. Um, you know, just I don't think it'd be a stretch to put, go, you know, go ahead and put on uh, some formal clothes, um, you know, a shirt and tie, a nice suit, um, you know, whatever it is you think uh, looks professional in your field or is appropriate <laughs> for the field you're applying to. And just take your picture uh, in that attire. I think that would be fine. Uh, manage your posts in the social networks, you know, for all these uh, reasons we talked about. Uh, you could go as far as to create an effective personal website. Uh, there's plenty of softwares, software <laughs> for that. Uh, there's, uh, what is it, um, Google Sites a lot of people use and it's pretty easy to create a website with that or WordPress and usually you can do these for free just a few minutes it can be a pretty good step uh, especially if you have a lot of files or uh, other things you want to basically put into a portfolio uh, something more extensive than just a resume and cover letter all right so anyway uh, that went a little bit shorter uh, please uh, make a comment ask a question or just let me know what you're thinking so far and I'll see you next time